In this video, we're going to set up a GPU.NET node. And what's important to know is that you should use Firefox for all these steps because I've done them in Chrome. It didn't work quite right. And in Firefox, I had zero issues at all. So please be sure to use Firefox. Now let's get to it. All right, first you need a VPS service. And in this video, we are going to use the Contable one. Now you can either sign up or log in. I already have an account, so I'm going to click log in. And then once you have an account, we can go to the next step. But before we do, let me just quickly explain to you what GonChain is. So GonChain functions as a decentralized computing network where participants can contribute their GPU power as providers or utilize computational resources as consumers, earning 300 G points for their contributions that support network growth. Now the platform integrates a robust node consensus mechanism with specialized queen nodes for job assignments and health checks, overseen by a king node, ensuring system integrity. Designed for accessibility, GonChain eliminates the complexity of crypto wallets and technical expertise, making it suitable for developers and enterprises. Positioned as a leader in decentralized computing, GonChain offers a secure, efficient, and user-friendly platform, leveraging GPU power for innovation and community-driven development. So that's, in short, what GonChain is. It's the dedicated blockchain of GPU.net. Right, let's go to Contabo again. So I'm going to log in because I already have an account, as stated before. And then when you're in the menu of Contabo, you can go up here, New Order VPS. It takes you to a new page. Now, what's important to know is that you don't pick the cheapest one. The manual actually says that you need Ubuntu 20.04 or newer with a Docker installed. You need 2.0 gigahertz for the multi-core processor. You need a minimal cores of 4 and a RAM of 8 gigabytes. So that places you here because the other ones have 6 and 4. So I need to select this plan. And then you can select your term months. Now, if you select a year, you will save one month, basically. But I'm just going to keep it at one month. I'm going to use the European Union. So I'm going to keep this default. I'm going to keep the storage type default as well, because that's plenty enough. And we are going to select the operating system. Now, in this case, we're going to use Ubuntu 2020.04, because that's the newest version. And we need a login and password for our server. So I'm going to create a new password for that. And what's important for the password is that you can't use special characters. Then we have the object storage. We're going to keep that on none. We have the networking. We're going to keep that default. And then we have the add-ons, which we won't change at all. And we're going to click next. That takes us to our payment page where you can change the payment method if you desire to do so. Now let's complete the payment and move on to the next step. So your payment and order has been received and is currently being provisioned, expected provisioning times, web space, etc. So we now need to wait before we get an email that tells us that we can now use the VPS. The next step is getting a terminal. And in this case, we're going to use Potty. So just go to www.pottygen.com slash download and then you'll be able to download it. I'll make sure to put a link in the description down below for you. So you can follow along more easily. But this is the next step into the manual. So it's very important that you don't skip this one. Right. So be sure to install it after you've downloaded it. And then let's move on to the next step. All right. So once you've downloaded and installed Putty, it is now time for you to go to the next step so you can use this application. Now here with the host name or IP address, you need to paste the IP address that was delivered to you by mail through Contabo. Any mail is called or it's got the topic of your login data. It shows you your customer ID, your IP address, server type, location, etc. Now the password that you need to use here is the one that you've chosen during the order process. So let me fill in my IP address real quick and then click open. Putty will give you a pop-up, which I'm not showing right now because I have to blur everything out, but it will say your host key is not cached for this server, blah, blah, blah. You can just hit it accept and then you will see this terminal. And in this terminal, you need to choose login as, and that's probably your root. And then you click enter and then it requires you to fill in your password. Now, when you fill in your password, you won't see anything happening but it will be written down. Click enter once you've done that. And now you are accessing your VPS server. Next, you need to create an SS58 address by using the polkadot.js extension. Now you can go to this website and you can download it for Chrome or for Firefox. But like I said, please use Firefox because Chrome is giving you lots of issues. 
download it, and it will show up here, the Polkadot extension. Now to create an SS58 address, you can use the Polkadot extension, but I find it very buggy and laggy. So what I did instead was I went to sub wallet and then I downloaded the extension. I created a new wallet with that. So you click on add on and then you can add it on. It's going to say you want to add it to your extension list. I'm going to click add. Now it's been added. I'm going to click OK. And here it is. I can create a new account. I can import an account. So just create a new account and it's with every other wallet. You just need to start it. You get a seed phrase. You need to remember that seed phrase, write it down or whatever. And then that seed phrase can be used in Polkadot by using the Firefox browser again. So when you use that extension, you can go to the Polkadot extension. You can open it. You can click the plus sign right here. And then you can click create new account. But like I said, if you get a wallet through a sub wallet, you can click import account from pre-existing seed. Now, if you click that, you will have to add in the seed words here and just go to two or three steps. It's very self-explanatory. So I'm not addressing it in this video to save you guys some time. All right, so make sure to set that up. Now, if you haven't already, you need to buy G points as well. You need approximately a hundred to use the testnet or to stake them. So you can use your node on the testnet. With the regular mainnet, you will have to use 1000 G points. And please know that they are increasing in increments. I was a little bit late, unfortunately. So I had to pay $150 for 100 G points rather than 100. In this case, what I did, because I need them there, was I clicked want to receive G points in SS58 wallet. That will automatically place them there. And then it's much more easier. So you don't have to bridge them anymore. However, if you do want to bridge them because you've purchased them with your EVM wallet, for instance, you can use the right menu, which is the transfer G points. Just click the amount of G points, fill in your SS58 address and then click transfer G points. Right, let's move on to the next part of setting up a node, which is now that we need to add the validator node. Now we need to prepare our wallets. So we need to have two wallets ready. We need to have the EVM wallet ready where we purchased the node in. So that's basically the Ethereum wallet that holds the license for your node. And then you need your SS58 address uh, generated for your con chain. Now we need to go to the dashboard. We need to connect the wallet. I'm going to use MetaMask. And because I've already done this step in preparation of this video, you will now need to click that validator node. So you need to choose the validator role, then connect your wallet to the dashboard and then select the option to become a validator. And then you'll have to enter your SS58 address. So you need to fill in the previously generated SS58 address when prompted. I'll show you a quick screenshot up here in the screen so you know which screen to look at. Right. Let's move on to the next one, which is adding the SS58 account to the Explorer. So we need to refresh the Polkadot Explorer and we will get a pop-up which says account connection request. So when you go to the GAN scan link in the description down below, in the next step, you will get this pop-up. You need to click the checkbox, select all, and then click connect one account. All right, and once this process is done, I can see I have a total balance of 100 G points. So that's what I need. And you have one extension that needs to be updated with the latest chain properties in order to display the correct information for the chain. If you have this, the manual says you need to do the following steps. So we need to go to settings, go to metadata. We need to click here, update metadata. Then we'll get this pop up and we need to click yes, do this metadata update. And once that's done, we need to go to the documents to avoid line separation errors when copying command lines. And we are now going to start running the validator node. So first, we need to check if we have a Docker installed on our system. So we need to run the following command. Now it says I don't have a Docker. So that means I need to install the Docker. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So first we need to run a command that will uninstall all conflicting packages. Now let's install the Docker using the app repository because you see the manual has a couple of things. I'm just going to copy all these codes so you don't have to write those down yourself. But just clicking here, copy. And then I'm going to place those inside the Docker by hitting the right mouse button or inside my VPS. Basically, I'm going to click enter. It's now installing the Docker. Once that's done, you need to install the latest version. So there's another command for that. So let's paste that here. Let's click enter again. I'm going to select yes. Once it's done, make sure to just refresh your server. So just close down Putty and then come back again. And now let's see if it worked by entering the code to verify that the Docker engine installation is successful 
by running the hello world command. And now we can move on to the next step of the manual. We need to complete the post installation steps for the Docker as well, because by default, we are now entering the VPS as a root, but we don't want to enter it as root. We need to create a different one. So first we need to create a Docker group. Then we need to create a user and the final part should be the user name. Then we need to log out and log back in so that our group membership is reevaluated. But we can also run the following command to activate the changes to the group. Now we need to verify that we can run the Docker commands without sudo. Now let's close it down and open it again. And then I had to change a couple of things. So I had to add a new user because for some reason it didn't work quite right. But you need to use this command. So dollar sign sudo spacebar add user spacebar and then your username. You will be prompted. So here's an example. You will be prompted with a password. Just enter that password, re-enter that password, and then keep everything else as default. Then is this information correct? Yes. And then we need to reboot our system we should, so we can close this down end this session and we need to go back to the Contabo website go to your account and then you will have the option to check your services and that will show you your vps devices now go to this button manage and then click control and then be sure to click the restart button you will need to wait a few minutes for this to come back and then once that's back we need to log in using putty again and in this case i'm going to log in with my new username and my new user password and we are now back in our server. So it's time to move on to the next step, which is we need to run the Docker container. And in here, we can change the name of our node, which is this with the name of our choice. And we need to make sure that we get rid of these brackets as well. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you need to fill in the commands to run it. And then once that's done, you need to run the following command with your container ID to see the logs. Now we need to add the validator into the Explorer. And the manual says this, we need to run this following command in the same machine where you are running the validator node. So I'm going to click copy, right mouse button again, hit enter. And the key with the result here is what we need to save for future use. So it's very important that you do that. And now we need to go to the staking section of their blockchain explorer where we will see an option to add the validator. So we need to click network and we need to click staking. And then we have an option where we can add the validator. So validator with the plus symbol, I click that option and a new pop-up. So go to accounts and then click here, validator, a plus sign. We will have this pop-up and we need to select our account. So that's the SS58 account and then the value you want to add. So in this case, it needs to be 100 G points. All right, so I'm editing this video. I just said that you need to fill in 100. Make sure you put in like 101 or 102 because if you use 100, it won't go through or it won't work correctly. I noticed that when I was done shooting this, I couldn't find the node in the waiting list, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But be, sh be sure to use here like 102, just to be sure that the transaction will follow through. Then we need to click next. And here we need to create the key that we got from the putty one and then click on bond and validate. Then we need to enter our account password and select sign and submit. And we get this pop up where we need to enter the password for this account. Then we need to click sign the transaction. And if all goes well, we should be able to see our account in the pending validators. However, your validator will start making blocks and earning rewards from the next era. And one era is 24 hours. Now, if you want to see if everything went through correctly, go to network staking again, go to overview, and then go to waiting, and then check the waiting list to see if your account is here. And if it's not here, be sure to join them in their chat and ask for help or assistance so that you can run your testnet node as quickly as possible. And that, my friends, is how you set up your node for GPU.net testnet. I hope you guys like it. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys next time. Doei.